Tom, what am I doing today with you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so today we're going to be doing a rerouting tutorial. So it's going to be kind of similar to last week's tutorial on like projecting, but we're going to try and uh, break down the process of like actually reading a route. So how to interpret holes, how to think about beta, you know, and also some basic tips for new newer climbers as well. Cool. Let's yeah. get on step one. Let's let's get on. Let's go do it. Step one. Step one. So step one is to take a step back. Uh, oh, damn! So that's, so pretty, that's pretty meta. Zero. That's step zero. Yeah. So um, before you start a climb, take a, take a couple steps back. Look at the whole thing, so you can get an idea of the whole route. So a lot of people will just like walk straight in and start climbing without looking up. Make sure to look up, get a whole idea of the whole route. Even if you don't quite know how to read a route, if you can look at the whole thing, at least you can identify where it starts, where it finishes, and if it kind of goes to the left or the right, yeah? So you're gonna save yourself some energy there. Um, yeah, that, that's all I got for step one. Cool. Should we go step two? Simple, yeah. yeah. Okay. Step numero dos. <laughs> step two. Step two is identifying handholds from footholds. So there's a couple ways to do this, but the easiest way is to probably look for chalk marks. So you'll notice that on handholds, you quite often get like a buildup of chalk if the root's been there for a little while, and footholds are going to have much more rubber on top of them. So have a look and see which holds are predominantly chalky or, or rubbery, and that should tell you if they're foot or handholds. Obviously, handholds can also be footholds, but footholds are less likely to be handholds, so it's probably easier to find the footholds. So I can tell that all these down here obviously aren't handholds, and I can also tell that there's no chalk on this, this, or this one. So from that, I'm going to guess that those are all supposed to be footholds as well. Particularly on lower grade problems, if, a hand, if it looks too small, it's probably a foothold. Um, so sometimes you might have to go further for a better hold, but that's going to save you energy than going you know, to, the, to the first one you can see. Um, I see that quite a lot. People just going for the first hold they can see, but that's actually a foothold. And then they have to come back down and go up to the better hold. Yeah, step three. I might, I might add in a little bonus, oh. little bonus tip. So footholds and handholds can often follow a theme. So not necessarily on this climb here, but on some climbs you'll notice that all the footholds are a particular type of hold and all the handholds are a slightly different type of hold. So that can be another good way of identifying. But uh, I'll chat about that in a bonus tip later on. All right, let's go step three. Step son. Step three. So, step three is working out which hand to go with first and also working out key sequences. Why do I want to know which hand to go with first? So, on a lot of lower grade climbs, whichever hand you start with will then set up the rest of the sequence to flow perfectly. So, a lot of lower grade climbs will just be left, right, left, right. And as long as you get the first one right, or left, then the rest of the hands will follow. Okay. So, one way to work out which hand to go with first is to look at the two starting holes. So, in this case, they're both quite close together but the right hand hold is higher and it's also a better hold. So it's easier to hold. That's because I can get my whole hand in it and it's also slightly deeper than this kind of two finger pocket. Um, from that, I can gather that they're gonna want me to keep my right hand here and move with a left hand to start. Um, and if I go with my left hand, then the rest of the climb should go quite smoothly. Yeah, let's go look at something a bit higher grade and then talk about some key, key sequence kind of stuff. On slightly trickier climbs, sometimes the start position may not be obvious. Or, I mean, the start position might be obvious, but it might not necessarily set you up to do the whole climb in sequence. Um, so in that kind of case, you want to have a look to see if there's any move in particular where you can see easily that you're going to need a right hand or a left hand on a particular hole. And then from that move, you can then work the sequence backwards or you can work it up to the top from there. Sure. So I've picked out this orange V2. And it's kind of confusing because you've got like the handholds and the footholds all look quite similar and there's quite a lot of them all kind of clustered around each other. But just after the cluster, the penultimate hold, maybe I'll try and highlight this somehow in video editing. No, I probably won't. Um, now I can tell that that's supposed to be a right hand hold. Um, it's slightly angled towards the right and also the finish hold is a one hand hold and it's angled to the left. So that makes me think the finish hold must be a left hold, that hold must therefore be a right hold, and then from there I can work it back. So that means I need to be going off my left hand to reach that right hand hold, so I'm gonna have to have my left hand on this undercut. And then from there it's quite easy to work back down to the ground, 
because you just bring your right hand down here and then do 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 back. Cool. But shall I give it a go to see yeah, if I read it right? It, yeah. Okay, so the right hand's better than the left hand, so I think I've got to move left hand first. This hole's quite poor. Oh god. But yeah, if you go again, that one's much better. So I'm gonna show you what you shouldn't do. So if I come right hand to this, it could think that you're supposed to go left hand over the top to this hole. From there, I'm in like this super weird position. I think it's still possible from here, but it's not gonna be enjoyable. You'd have to match and then go up. But the way it's supposed to be set, right, I'm gonna climb down and do it. So if you flick into the undercut, work a high foot up, then it's much easier to come right hand straight over. So yeah, the idea there is that if there's an obvious right or left hand, you can then work the sequence back down. So I started with that obvious right hand higher up, and then I worked the moves back down to the bottom. Yeah, so we should, it's probably worth mentioning now that root reading is a skill that grows over time and it also grows with the amount of moves you do. So if I'd never seen a move like that before, I probably wouldn't be able to read it in that way. So you'd have to, you'd look at it and be like, I don't know what the hell that is. You'd have to try it, work it out. But once you know that move, then you'll start seeing that move over and over again in lots of different places. Also, you should try and reread everything you try. So don't just root read the stuff that's gonna be tricky for you. Root read the stuff that's also not tricky, just because the more you look at moves and visualize your body in that space and then you know, actualize it by trying it, the more you're gonna learn about your own body, your own climbing, and how to read more moves in the future. Um, yeah. Sweet, let's go to another step. So step four is just effectively doing it. So once you've worked that all out in your head, give the climb a go. If you don't do it, evaluate. You'll have gained some more information from trying those holds, feeling the, feeling the moves up a bit, and then... Step yeah, four is essentially go. our project in tutorial. Yeah, step four is effectively the project in video. Cool. Um, You've got some top tip for us now. You're going to tell us what you do to yeah. complete the steps. So bonus tips. So a, a good thing that a lot of people do is like miming out the sequence on the ground and miming out the, the footholds as well. Um, yeah, it looks silly. It looks when you silly, see people but, doing, but it really it's helps. Really useful. Like if you once you start actually like miming out the moves, you can suddenly work out like, oh no, I can't. You know, like I can't like match this hold, or I can't um, hold this hold in a certain way, yeah. or like, or like these moves actually don't then flow into this other sequence that I've read. And to be honest, it's less about the physical mind and more about just climbing it in your head. Yeah, it's just can... it's just about like visualizing the moves. Because um, yeah. you can essentially fall off in your head yes. and then not waste your energy falling off in real life. Exactly, you're saving energy by doing it. It also means that you're going to get more out of your climbing sessions if you're, if you're reading the routes. So next bonus tip is kind of sport climbing related. So leading on from miming it out, make sure you're reading what you're clipping on the route. So yeah, if you're rope climbing, if you're leading, you're going to be wanting to make sure you're 100% certain, or I don't know, 80% certain, where you're going to be clipping each bolt from because that's where you're going to be saving the most energy on the route. Most clipping positions on indoor routes will either be just below a clip or so that the clips are roughly chest height. So there's normally going to be like a good hold somewhere there. Um, yeah, so bonus tip would be learning the holds at your local climbing centre and, and learning what they're regularly used for. So holds are made by people, obviously, and a lot of holds will have a specific use that they're made for. So um, obviously you have footholds and handholds and like slopes and crimps, etc. But some holds will often be used as, let's say, undercuts because they just have a certain shape or a side pull because they have a certain shape. Um, and often some footholds will often be used as a, a thumb catch or something like that on a rouette. So yeah, look at the holds and the more you start realizing that, oh, this hold's often used for this, the easier it'll be for you to read that move again. Um, so yeah, just like get used to the holds at your center, learn the holds, and also go to other centers to see how they use holds there as well. Bonus tip number three or four, leading on from the last tip, is trying to think like a root setter. So just like how holds are made by people, roots are obviously set by people. So there's normally an intended method, there's normally an intentional way that you're supposed to do a root. Um, and by looking at the way particular holds are facing, um, you can start to try and work out what they intend, you know? 
like what they yeah, what they envision. For what the move they want to get out of it. Yeah, so by looking at that that V4, I could tell by that right hand crimp being a bit of a side pull that they that they were intending you to put a heel hook on. Um, so yeah, just try and think a little bit like a root setter. Like if I was putting if I put those holes like that, what would I be trying to make you do? I uh, don't know if I've got any, oh yeah, so last two little bonus tips is it's useful to film yourself climbing as well. Um, watching video of yourself climbing back is useful to see how, how you look in comparison to how you thought you looked when you were reading yeah. the roof. Um, so that can help you get, get better at visualizing moves. Um, and the last one is sometimes time yourself on a boulder maybe. Try and do like a competition simulation, like give yourself four minutes to read and climb a problem. Um, and that with no like prior knowledge of a route before. So if there's a new set, give yourself a time limit to read and try and do the problem in a couple of goes. Yeah, that was my, my thoughts on route reading. Um, obviously lots of other people probably have different ways of approaching it. There's quite a few good articles out there on the internet as well that have good information on route reading. Also comment down below if there's anything you do in particular to help your route reading or make your route reading better. Um, yeah. Root, root, root. route reading is a hard one because it's so mental and it's very hard to explain because it requires experience and knowledge of holds and climbing in general. So exactly. you will just get better. Yeah, you'll get time. better and better. But yeah, so the key thing to take away from this is that if you're not doing a lot of route reading, make sure you're route reading all the time because mm. it's going to make you a million times better. It can help you at any level of yeah. climbing. Yeah, every level. Every level. You should do it all the time. Cool. Always read it. Definitely. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. And if this video was useful to you, Maybe consider subscribing to our Patreon because it helps us keep creating content like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, cool guys. Check out our other projects in tutorial. Yeah. Um, and yeah, sweet. Hopefully See we've got some more dank stuff coming up soon. So. Cool. Washi one hamabao. Step one. Ooh. So step one is pretty simple. Simple, simple. Simple, simple. Step two. Step two. So step two is... Threads. Threads or Stepforium. <laughs> Um, step, st still, step, stop it. It's step three. 